the front door. Welcome to Chesham. Well, it's the first time that we've been here and it's amazing. This is a single track from Chalfont and Latimer, the next station up the line down to here. Now, it looks as though there might have been a second track here at one time because there is a sort of an empty dip. But, um, Paul, you have discovered an absolutely fabulous little garden down there. And of course, um, we're in Zone 9 and there's a bicycle that actually says Zone 9 on it. Ah. So we have arrived at Chesham tube station. This is the first time that we've been here. This is in zone nine of the underground on the Metropolitan Line. And I notice really lovely garden right off the platform. This is a single track tube line leading into Chesham. And this is such a glorious place to visit, I think. There is a lovely garden right here. Oh, keeps you close to nature and it says support Chesham in bloom this summer. An interesting thing about this garden is that the little path almost looks like a railway track running along the edge. Chesham station really is quaint. It's got a really old fashioned bike shed in there and it looks as though it might actually be quite safe because they could probably lock, it. lock the door up and it's got these fantastic old beams above us look at this and of course we are out in the middle of the countryside here in Buckinghamshire and I think this is just fabulous um, it's just gives you like a real villagey sort of feel yet you've got a London underground train sitting right next to you here it's nice that there is also this series of old photographs and drawings of Chesham from way back in the day. Well, this train is about to leave for Aldgate. Now, you have to be careful out here because it is a single branch line. There is only one train every half an hour. It's and not really that frequent, it's, is it? it's not that frequent. It can't be because there can only be one train on the track at the same time. And we were filming the whole way from uh, Chalfont and Latimer to Chesham. And on my uh, phone, the time, it showed it was about six and a half minute journey. So that's why um, they can only operate the one train um, at, a t at a time. And it takes, there's like a half hour gap. This one is about to leave. Yeah. yeah. This is the, well, we're here, the 11.30 service. And there is a lady standing at the door I don't know what she's doing holding it up she's talking to somebody and the, the door stopped and the, the lights gone off the trains are leaving so yeah there won't be another one for another half hour don't forget to tap out Marcus <laughs> yeah I've got my card here the gates are open but you must tap out otherwise you'll be charged the full fare so here we are there's a lovely little ticket office here you've got well when I say ticket office I mean machine they don't have ticket offices on the tube anymore and there is a little information area there I might try to step behind this seat and they also have a electronic status board over here Ooh, no, look at all this. Um, because we're sort of out near Oxford as well, I suppose. So you've got 
the Oxford sightseeing. Um, what else did I see? The airline bus that goes from Oxford oh, to Heathrow and to Gatwick. Um, is there anything of interest that we might want to pick they up here today? They have some children stuff, some box museums. Yeah, the children Windsor Castle film society. Even. Yeah. Tube and map. tube maps up there as well. Two different designs on that one. Can you believe that we went from zone six in Uxbridge to Harrow on the Hill in zone five and now we're all the way out in zone nine? It's quite a journey, I think. Well, it's a shame that there isn't a link that goes the straight route. We have to go up to go back down again. Right, so this is what we need to see, an actual timetable. Because as I said earlier, you have to be very careful when you come here because there's a half hour gap between services. So it looks as though we're here on a Sunday. Sunday. It's on the hour and the half hour. So um, we need so to that be here fine. before the half past. Before the half past, yes, because it does leave at that time. If you go onto the TFL website, it will give you uh, it so sort of, uh, yeah, it gives you a little bit of leeway. It will say um, like 11, 28 plus two or something like that. So as you're not just rushing uh, for the train at the last minute. But here we are, as you can see, Chesham is on a branch line. And look, there's the station entrance right there. If you're interested in walking, you could do the Chess Valley Walk. This beautiful and interesting walk follows the valley of the River Chess for 10 miles from here in Chesham to Rickmansworth. You can walk the whole length or follow one of the suggested circular routes ending at local stations. Some of the walk will take you down to the Chess but also lead you into the hills for breathtaking views. And what I really like about this map is that it shows where the pub is everywhere along the way <laughs> because of course you might need to use the loo and that is one reason to go to the pub. Oh, look at this underground. Um, the roundel. The roundel, right. And the sign pointing to the station. But I think we go down this way. Oh, this. there's way over there. So we go down this oh, way. We're gonna go to the center here. So this, I don't know what road this is. This isn't Station Road, is it? So we're coming close to the main street. I think I see water stones over there. Oh wow, well that's good that they've got a water stones. And there's a boots next to it. It's a Sunday and it looks as though it's closed. That's what you'll find out in some of these places. Some uh, stores will be closed on a Sunday. But look, this, this is actually Station Road. But wow, look at this. What a fabulous town. Now, I've got to say something at this point. We have been meaning to come to Chesham for some time. Ah, <gasps> yes. But the reason we actually are here now is because we were watching Heartstopper and there was um, a scene of a town centre. Near the end of the series. Near the end of the series, the second series. And there was a building with a dome and it looked like a town hall, something like that. And we knew across. that it had been filmed around Slough area. And I knew it wasn't Slough. So what I did was, I thought, well, it's got to be within a 40 mile sort of radius of Slough. So I looked at all the, the towns around and eventually I thought, it wouldn't be Chesham, would it? And it was. Oh, wow. But I think the reason I actually did realise it was Chesham in the end because there was a, a Poppins restaurant, I think. Oh, right. And I think it's down here. Or there was something else. There was another shop. And I was able to work out that it was Chesham from there. But we're walking. I guess this is the, the main street. Near the high street. The high, sorry, the high street. And we are coming down to the building with the clock and the dome, which I think is the town hall, but we'll find out when we get there. Ah, yes, Turner and Browning Opticians. That was the building that was the clincher to determine that it was actually Chesham. And <laughs> look, this isn't a building at all. It's a, a clock tower, basically. Oh, let's go and take a look. This is the landmark that we saw on the sort of the overall wide shot on Heartstopper.
There are flowers everywhere around Chesham and they have won various Britain in Bloom awards as well. So it says this is the Stirling Bell. Here hangs the 18th century town bell, named in memory of Stirling Maguire, who led its restoration to Market Square in 2014. So it looks like this is the town hall. Is yeah, and look at this fabulous mural down here. Welcome to Chesham. Town Hall is also home to Chesham Museum. Chesham, Buckinghamshire's third largest town, has existed for over 1,000 years. There is evidence of settlement by the Celts, Romans and Saxons, with the Saxons calling Chesham Castlesham, meaning pile of stones by the water meadow. According to this picture, Chesham Town Hall in Market Square was demolished in 1967. And there's the clock tower, so maybe that formed part of the original town hall. I think it's lovely, the fact of Chesham having all these potted plants dotted along the town. It does give an, a, a new meaning to being green, does it not? If you think that our show is absolutely smashing, then please subscribe. And what is it called again? It's called a marker on your shirt. And it's absolutely delicious. It is. It's actually quite a big time. It is. I didn't think it was. And I'm amazed that I've never actually been here. Because I used to live in High Wycombe. I mm -hmm. used to live uh, in, in Oxford Oxbridge. Before with, with you, of course. And, you know, it's just one way? of those places that we've just never been to. There are some places that are open today on a Sunday, such as this. Um, Savers supermarket type of place super saver sorry can't get it out right um and then there's some independent places and then there are some places that we know and love such as costa oh look they've got a master butcher but do they also have a master baker <laughs> i hope so yes i think that they do because there is a greg's right over there but this is sad look that used to be m and co and of course it's closed down. Quite a big building they had here as well. It was a big building, wasn't it? Ah, shall we go into Waterstones? Yeah. As we did see it, we've come back to where we started at Station Road. Oh look, there's a, a Lebanese village over there as well. But I think we'll go into Waterstones. We've just come out of Waterstones. So we're walking up now to 
I would call this, if I was in Ireland, I'd call this the diamond, but it's the, it's the war memorial. Um, I guess the diamond is more sort of the other end of town where the, the town clock is, but we've walked from one end of the high street to the other. The sun has decided to come back out once again. It does go through periods of light drizzle and rain, I'm afraid, and also sunny spells. So this is an interesting circle with some activity in here. There's a pub called The Tavern. Look! Beyond the War Memorial, there's another street because I see W. H. Smith. Hmm. So and also a Lloyd's. And a Lloyd's. So there must be even more to Chesham to discover. There is some more life beyond this circular area. Right in front of me is the General Arms Free House. I think this might be a lively place, and it is open for business now that it is close to one o'clock. There's a pizzeria that isn't open today and there's a nail salon right here there's a lloyd's bank as well as a wh smith right on my right i'm assuming this is a local news agent but i don't think that they're open on the weekend i think i'm gonna have to go into wh smith to check out the local newspapers and this is the high street leading up to Sainsbury's, as well as Waitrose, I believe. There's a solicitor's called BPS Solicitors and a Hunter's estate agent. I think this coffee place might have closed down. There is a Rennie Grove Hospice Care, another Mel's Barbershop, so they so they do like to get their haircuts and there's a Chinese herbal medicine called the Healing Point and a dry cleaner. I think dry cleaners are an essential part of the community as well as the post office right here. Oh, look what we have here, another barbershop. And I was correct, there is a waitress on my right hand side at some point because I do see the signs for it. The Sainsbury and Argos is right on to my left and the Waitrose sign is right in front of me right next to this Burger Inn Cafe. So after you do your shopping you could just pop right in for a quick bite to eat. What a marvelous idea. And I do believe that the Waitrose is up this ramp. Coming across a actual post office is a bit of a rarity because in today's turbulent business model, um, post offices are normally within other businesses such as WH Smith and things of that nature. So it's good to see that this post office is still up and running and you would assume that it wouldn't be open on a Sunday because they're normally open between Monday and Saturdays. Look at this, Paul. Well, I didn't I get any local papers, but I was able to get two Scottish papers. No. Don't look at the date, you'll see when we filmed this, but look, the Sunday Post and the Sunday Mail. That's quite a find. I always find it interesting, these twisted signs here. Were they meant to be like that or did someone do it? Across this busy road is the Algeva. It's a theatre and cinema, I believe. Lots of productions are held there throughout the year. Well, we've got a choice of supermarkets here, big ones too. There's a Sainsbury's on this side and on the other side, through a little archway coming up, yeah, is Waitrose. So it's just round the corner here. And of course, we're going to Waitrose. 
We might go to Sainsbury's as well, though. Gosh, we had to walk up a bit of a hill to get here from the high street, but we have arrived. And fortunately, Paul, you have remembered to bring our reusable cups In because order to the yeah, free coffee. yeah, you get a free or coffee tea. or tea if you spend something in here. So we're definitely going to do that. Well, we've just done our shopping at Waitrose and we have claimed our free coffee. We both got a cappuccino, but it took a little bit of time to work out how to use the machine because it's the first time that we've claimed a free coffee since Waitrose reintroduced the deal. And what you have to do is, um, you have to make sure that once you've uh, done your shopping, when you're paying for it, that you enter a coffee onto the receipt, scan your Waitrose card, and then it will appear on the receipt. When you go to the machine, you then have to scan your Waitrose card again, and it will have registered that you did enter the details mm. of the coffee at the till. And then you press the button for the coffee you want, because we were like pressing cappuccino and it wouldn't come out. Would it work? It said 0.00.1. I thought, what does that mean? Anyway, there was a scanning device next to the machine. So that's what you do. It's rather hot. So we're going to leave it to cool oh. a little bit while we sit on this lovely bench outside Waitrose. Look at the giant teacup, Paul. Oh, right. It says it's the drawing room licensed restaurant artisan coffee shop. Looks quite interesting, but we've just had our coffee and now you are looking for a pint. Isn't that the bookshop that was in Heartstopper? I think so. I think we should go in. So we found the Mad Squirrel and I think it's a craft beer emporium. I think so. And I'm sure it is the same as the one that we went to in Rickmansworth. Ring a bell. Let's take a look. So I have got a shamrock and it is an Irish stout. And I got a two-thirds of a pint because they serve them in one-thirds, one-half, two-thirds and a pint, which is absolutely fantastic to have such a range. And Paul, what did you get? The roadkill, I think mine was 6.5. Ah, 6.5. I think mine was 3.4, was it? I'm not too sure, but it's just when I saw Shamrock and it, it was, was Irish. Yes, it was Irish and the, the word was written in orange and gold and white, I think, as well. You did take a picture in there, so we'll, uh, we'll fling that up. So but cheers. Cheers. Oh. oh, wow. Very happy. This is like a, a lighter version of Guinness with a bit more sort of fizz to it. Um, it is a stout, so is you it get limited. very heavy? Uh, no, it's not heavy at all. It is quite light. I would, I would call it a light stout if that is possible. I think this is fairly deceiving because um, it is kind of hoppy and it kind of masks all the alcoholic um, components to it. Well, um, what is hoppy really? I mean, when you talk about hoppy, what are you talking about? It's, it's just... That is the term that they use for these ales, these American pale ales. Oh, right. Okay. All I know is if it's a stout, it's black, like the, the, the black stuff. Guinness. But this is shamrock. We've had our lunch, oh, well, a very fast. late one. At it was fabulous. <laughs> the George and Dragon. And um, so you had the Cajun, Cajun chicken. Cajun. Cajun chicken. I can never pronounce it. And Cajun. I had the Southern Fried Chicken Burger, which was really, really which nice. Was better than mine. It was quite juicy. Oh, and you had a Guinness. Strangely enough, it wasn't me that had the Guinness this time, it was you. I do and like my Guinness. What did I have? I Oh yes, of course, how could I forget? I had a dizzy blonde because of course that's what I used to be. So yeah, that is basically it from Chesham. We are heading back to the tube now. What <laughs> do we think about Chesham? 
loved it. it was I have to good. say, you know, if there were more trains um, and if there were other options in case the tube isn't running, I think we'd Definitely. live out here because it just really is. It's such a, it's got a real village feel to it. It's got better shops than Uxbridge has. <laughs> and it's a lovely little town centre, but it is a little bit out of the way unless you've got a car. So where Before we is, go, where's the station though? Wait a minute. Where's no, the station? Over there. Okay. Oh, you've something to say. Before we go, um, if you do like our channel, please hit the subscribe button right now because we do appreciate that, obviously. And we do also appreciate your likes and comments as well. So keep them coming. Indeed. All oh, right, we're off to the tube. Okay, so we're at the station now. So I forgot to touch in. Trains there. I think we should be getting on soon. Oh yeah, let's just get on. This one? This one? God, I'm out of breath after walking up that hill. What a day. This is an all station metropolitan line train to Allgate. The next station is Chalfont and Latimer. This train is ready to depart. Please stand clear of the doors. 